about this enough. Like, like I'm just shocked that we don't talk about this enough. But I feel like I say that every time I like start one of these. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be good. I was expecting it to be good. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be as obsessed as I was. And now there's five books and I'm going to have to flip through all of them in order to get my fix. Um, bodice ripping. Just what's not in here? <laughs> New York's hottest club. <laughs> New York's hottest club, um, 18th, 19th century, whatever, ye olden times, Regency London, there you go, excuse me, um, did I say bodice ripping? Yeah, bodice ripping, um, 18th, 19th, whatever century, England, um, we've got a woman who is our female main character's cross-dressing and she's secretly a jewel thief, we have heists, there are masked balls, we have people proclaiming their affection for one another at sword point, there is fencing. Everybody always seems to have a rapier on hand, so like that's kind of fun. Um, dragon shifters, did I say dragon? I think I said dragon shifters. I can't, I just, whew, my meds are wearing off and I'm, I sat down to film this at a very inopportune time. But anyway, this is The Smoke Thief by Shauna Abe. Uh, there are five books in this series. It is a dragon, it's like billed as uh, historical romance of the year. I feel like historical romance is accurate, but also like maybe fantasy historical romance would be a little bit more accurate because historical romance makes me think Regency and not, you know, dragon shifters, which is a huge part of this plot. Uh, so essentially, that's the back of the book. Uh, so essentially what you have happening here is our girl, oh, Alpha and Faded Mates. I forgot about that. There's Faded Mates in this too. Um, our girl, our like FMC, our female main character, she runs away from her secret village of dragon shifters somewhere in England because she knows that she was, she's also like an alpha, which means that she would have to marry the clan's alpha. Yes, 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 yes. She doesn't want to do that. So she runs away and it's like this big deal because everybody's like, no, you have to like stay here because if we gallivant, around England, then people will discover us. Okay, sure, fine, whatever. So like you're gonna hide in a secret village. I feel like that would cause way more questions if then somebody's like ever found your secret village. Anyway, uh, so she like runs away. She fakes her own death, which like snaps for that. And then using her mystical dragon powers becomes like an incredible jewel thief. So obviously, love that for her. This was something that I picked up a long time ago. I think this has been sitting on my shelf for like over a year, but knowing how much I have gotten into fantasy in the past like two years, fallen in love with like everything, Sarah J Mass, all that stuff, I was like jonesing for more like historical shifter, fantasy, romance kind of stuff. So this was one that was just recommended. It came out in like, I think, my mid 2000s maybe so it's it's been out for a minute but i was like what that was my point i was like what has come out in the past few years that like i just was not paying attention to fantasy at the time and now we know um so this is a five book series i'm absolutely gonna jump on to the next one however it is like self-contained so there's no cliffhanger or anything like that i'm fairly positive that the second book in this series just jumps to another person like in the clan but basically, she's running around, she's being this like amazing jewel thief. We love that for her, super fun. And then Alpha, our male main character, they, they're like precious diamond, like the tribes, because they're all dragons, they hoard stuff. So like, I guess they get a life essence, if you will, from said diamond, that part is a little murky on, uh, is stolen. So they realize like, oh, we have someone who knows about it, which means that like, someone must have escaped. And then they're all like, everyone's president accounted for. And then that's when he goes to London and realizes that this girl from his childhood faked her own death and she's alive and he's gotta like bring her back. And of course, just peak enemies to lovers. The romance is really, really good. Um, I was super into it. We've got a good like wound tending to trope as well. Um, I will say the one thing um, to like, it, there's not dubcon, but it's very much like Regency, like he's kind of an asshole. So um, I think she asked him at one point, like, is it gonna be SA or 
consensual like she asks him and his response is like well that doesn't exist between a husband and a wife which x nay on that um but it's fully consensual and you know they're into it by the time that they do get together it's just like him it's very like I don't know, I just took that as like a super 18th century, like, dickish thing to say. And when I mean enemies to lovers, I mean enemies to lovers. So, it like, it was annoying because I just was like, ugh, that's not, no, pass. Um, but, it like, I, I understand why it was in there because like, you're, he's a rake. He's not a gentleman. He's a dragon shifter rake. Um, so you get a lot of that, I think, like sometimes, and I don't read a ton of Regency, but I think you get that sometimes when you have like, a, a male character who you're at first like, oh my god, he's such a tool, and then like, you know, everybody falls in love with him, whatever. So, just, that's a, that is an exchange that happens, um, but, uh, their relationship is consensual and all of that stuff. Um, there is, there is, um, on page sex, there's no, it is not fade to black, however, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's like, pages and pages and pages of like, smutty, if you want, like, KU smut, then like you should go get KU smut. Um, but it is spicy and it is not fade to black. It is on page, so you get that. But like seriously, this just has all of the things. It just has all of the things. And it did take me a really, really long time to read it, but I think I just kept getting distracted with like other arcs and like other things that came out, like Crescent City 2 came out and all that stuff. But every time I would sit down to read it, I just would find it so goddamn enjoyable. It like, it just completely like sucked me into the world. So. <sighs> smoke thief it's so good i just don't feel like we talk about this one enough um i feel like it checks all of the boxes if you are into those kind of things again i was like listing off all of the things at the beginning but <sighs> it's just so good there are just so many things there are just so many things it's so good so um this is me yelling at you to go read smoke thief um if it sounds like your thing and then come back here and we can talk about it because Y'all, not enough people have read Smoke Thief, okay? Just not enough people. I need more people to read Smoke Thief, and that means you. <laughs> okay, um, this is gonna be just like eight minutes of me just going off in an unhinged way about Smoke Thief, but that's fine. That's okay. We can, we can deal with that. Um, <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm Bibliophile Blonde on everything. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Patreon. Thanks so much for my coming to my channel. I'm still working on like a sign off and like all of the YouTuberisms. This is only like my fifth video on YouTube or something crazy. So comment below. That's a YouTuberism. Um, comment below if you've got some sort of an idea for like a sign off or a greeting or something. Um, we need something. We'll figure it out. But uh, until next time, I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>